A German architect named Daniel Tandler fell in love with Hanok, Korean traditional houses. In the fall of 2017, he garnered a lot of attention with his first newly built Hanok project in Eunpyeong Hanok Village, which is Seoul City's first modern day Hanok Village. He was an economics major, but he switched majors and became an architect to do what he's passionate about. In 2014, he set up an architecture firm called Urban Detail Seoul and commenced his activities as an architect. Two-thirds of the houses he designs are Hanok. So then, what is it about Hanok that bewitched him? On our Lunar New Year edition of Heart to Heart, we sit down with German architect Daniel Tandler and learn more about his interest in Hanok and the Korean traditional culture. Welcome to the show, Daniel. It's great to have you. Hello, thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> We're obviously dressed in hanboks today because, of course, we are celebrating the Lunar New Year holiday here in Korea. Uh, and I'd like to say you look great, first of all. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when was the last time you wore a hanbok? You might know that my mother is Korean. Yes. And uh, as kids, uh, we would also celebrate Solal with the Korean community in Germany. Mm -hmm. So my mom, she bought these kids hanbok and put us in there and <laughs> that's actually when I wore hanbok. So how do you feel? I mean, how does it feel to be in a rather traditional, uh -huh. not a modern style, but traditional style hanbok? It, actually, it's, it feels more comfortable than I thought. Uh -huh. You know, the silk, it's, it's a very sturdy um, yes. fabric, mm -hmm. but actually it, uh, it feels not as bad. It's, it's comfortable. Very comfortable. Yeah. Especially wearing this big skirt, very comfortable, <laughs> I must say. <laughs> so, of course, you grew up in Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, you did spend some time in Korea. You did make, uh, you know, several visits in between as well. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to ask about perhaps the similarities mm -hmm. or the differences uh, relating to the overall ambience during yeah. major, you know, holidays, yeah. such as Hollal. Uh -huh. So what is it like in Germany and uh, how does it feel in yeah. Korea for you? I would say maybe the similarities uh, with such big holidays mm -hmm. is that you usually spend it with your family. Right. Right. So in Germany, maybe it's more Christmas than mm -hmm. New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. But um, the whole time between Christmas and New Year's Eve is quite important in Germany as in many other Western countries. Uh -huh. So the 25th and 26th are public holidays. Mm -hmm. And this time between Christmas and New Year, we call it in German, uh, which means in between the years. Oh. It's a time like the old year is almost over, but the new year you know, hasn't arrived yet. Mm -hmm. So it's this time where you, you think about what happened during the last year, uh, you reflect on yourself and you make resolutions for the new year. I see. So it's this sort of uh, time in Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, in Korea, I would say, Solal, maybe the difference is mm, your family outside of the core family is more important here. Mm -hmm. Like um, you have to take care of these relations in a formal way. So you gather and you have many people still have the the chesa, the yes. ancestral rates. Uh -huh. uh, maybe that's different. Not so much in Germany. Mm -hmm. Like it's more about the core family there. I, I see, would say I see. it's like a tradition that we've yeah. been carrying on for a very long time. Yes. yes. So uh, all right, let's. Uh, maybe shift our focus to your field of expertise, mm -hmm. which happens to be architecture. Yes. And uh, before we get into the work that you do, I'd like to ask about the architecture of Germany as well. Mm -hmm. What is it like? Can you tell us a bit about the architecture of Germany? Uh, if we talk about traditional architecture mm -hmm. and also always in comparison to Korea, there's some profound differences uh, you have to know about. Mm -hmm. In Germany, we have, I would say, a lot more historic architectural heritages um, that have survived. We had like huge destructions during the World Wars, but mm -hmm. still um, my hometown, for example, Hanmünden, it's a small town, maybe 25,000 inhabitants. And uh, along there, we have 700 medieval wooden houses left oh, wow. in, the, in the town center, mm -hmm. which are all protected under a, an architectural, maybe heritage law, protection mm -hmm. law old buildings, which are traditional buildings, but traditional means 
is almost equivalent to historic in Germany. Mm -hmm. These buildings are old. We don't have uh, a traditional profession anymore. There's no traditional carpenter in Germany. Oh, the traditional carpenter has evolved into the modern carpenter, mm -hmm. and you become a modern carpenter, and mm -hmm. then you can maybe specialize on preservation techniques oh, and such things. Uh -huh. Basically, we have lost the traditional professions. Mm. In Korea, on the other hand, the traditional um, skills, the carpentry, the craftsmanship, mm -hmm. it's still very much alive. We still can build totally yes. traditionally, and that's also very uh, uh -huh. precious. And modern architecture, the difference is, I would say, uh, in Germany, it was something that emerged within the country. You know about probably Bauhaus, and, yes. uh, uh, important uh, parts of architectural history, and Germany pl did play an important role here. It was all emerging within the country, whereas in Korea, modern architecture, mm -hmm. it came from outside. Right. So we have the traditional architecture, and then we have modern architecture, mm -hmm. and now we have to ask ourselves, okay, where are we heading now? Uh -huh. And that's what makes it interesting these mm -hmm. days. I understand that uh, you majored in economics in university. Originally, I did, yes. Yes, originally. Initially, that was your major. That's what you studied. Uh -huh. uh, and I'd like to ask when and why you decided to change field and start studying architecture. <laughs> well, um, I actually did start economics out of interest, I have to say. Mm -hmm. I was always interested in issues that uh, affect society, like unemployment, um, how do people, like how do uh, different countries trade with each other, uh -huh. things like this. But I wouldn't know what to do with that later on. So I thought, oh, maybe economic research could be something for me because I didn't want to work for a big company or mm -hmm. for, for a bank or something. So I decided to do an internship in Korea at an economic research institute. Mm -hmm. And I did my internship, I think it was after my second year. Okay. But it was so suffocating for me to see this environment sitting on your desk with like half high like partition walls. The little, little cuticle. Yes, linoleum flooring, which is gray and <laughs> cold light and sitting there for the whole day. Uh -huh. It felt like suffocating. Mm -mm. And I thought, oh my God, um, I have to change something. I have to change uh, uh, my way. And that's when I started to reflect on, hey, um, I don't know what to study instead, but maybe I ask myself, what do I like? What fascinates me? Mm -hmm. And I had two things that came up to my mind. Yes. One thing was I've always had a passion for like growing plants. Growing still plants. my hobby, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's what I love. But the other thing was I thought I actually really love everything uh, traditional about Korea, um, and in particular the architecture. Mm -hmm. So you've always had this fascination for Hanok, and um, I mean there obviously was a reason for that. But. Um, the way there, like, you know, you have so many doubts, like, w what am I doing here? Like, I had this idea, and, you know, my, my parents were so supportive, but uh -huh. I felt sorry for, you know, living off my parents' money and, mm. you know, doing, starting f from scratch again. Mm -hmm. and that was a hard part, but um, somehow I managed to stick onto it and put all my, you know, efforts and energy into this. Mm -hmm. And here I am now. Here you are. <laughs> this worked out. It and perhaps, out I mean, way. thanks to your parents, thanks to oh, their yes. support, oh, yes. uh, you were able to continue it's all, on. Yeah, yes. thanks to my parents. Uh -huh. yes, I, have to say. Uh, I also heard that this was while you were studying in Germany that you did a, uh, what was it, a project? It was a design project mm -hmm. on Hanuk. So could you tell us about that as well? Well, the, the original problem was, um, okay, I had this idea. I want to study about Hanuk and mm -hmm. I want to do some work connected to Hanuk. But um, when I first had this idea, um, there was almost no way to do it. It was really difficult to find a way mm -hmm. to, to get there. So what I did was I started studying in, in Germany, mm -hmm. uh, in Aachen, and uh, I studied architecture. And I was so lucky that the German system was quite free. So I would go to the professor and say, um, I want to do this project about Hanau. Can you give me the credit points for that? Oh, I see. And usually oh. the professors, if there's a student who's really interested in something and mm -hmm. is motivated, they won't reject you. So um, I found really, really nice professors who say, OK, mm -hmm. but how do you think we should approach? I don't know anything about Hanuk. I see. How can uh -huh. I possibly um, guide you? Mm. And I said, well, you don't, might not know about Hanuk, but I can prepare a report about Hanuk. We can learn together. And you know about architecture, you can tell whether this building works or not, if the circulation is good or bad, oh, if the space is you know, quality space or mm -hmm. not, you can judge on that. And uh, I was lucky, so the professors were supportive. Mm -hmm. And that's how I did it. It was a lot of um, 
improvising work and studies. A lot of hard work. Yeah, but I also came to Korea and studied at Seoul University for a semester. Uh -huh. And I did many internships here, so that's how I had to do it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what kind of work were you involved in? I mean, where did you work before you mm -hmm. actually started your own uh, architecture mm -hmm. firm? I uh, worked at a local architecture firm, which uh -huh. is called uh, Kuga Architecture, mm. for Hanok, mm -hmm. but also contemporary architecture in uh, reinterpreting um, Korean traditional space. And they've done a lot of research projects also. Mm -hmm. And I worked there for four years. I'm very grateful I got this chance to do that so I could learn a lot and build up you know, my base for mm -hmm. doing my own work now. So you have set up your own firm, architecture yes. firm, and, and you mainly focus on not only Hanok, mm -hmm. but um, you know, from design to constructing to renovating even. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about not only you know, residences, like houses, but we're talking about buildings as well. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. It's, it's a lot of work. It's, it's an architect's work, actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, personally, I don't call myself Hanok architect mm -hmm. because I think Hanok is architecture. And it's a part of architecture. It's I a see. part of the whole. And it's um, one of our main fields mm -hmm. of interest and of our work. I would say maybe two thirds of our projects are Hanok. Mm. And within that, like most of our projects are residential projects because Hanok in nature, it's mostly um, people who, like Korean people, who reflect and uh, they, they come to realize that they're missing something and they decide, oh, we want to live in Hanok. Yes, and uh -huh. the, those are usually uh, most of our projects. Mm -hmm. So we also have other projects. Yep. So you've obviously worked on many, many projects, uh, you know, built Hanoks, even, you know, renovated Hanoks. And I'm sure um, as you pass by certain areas, mm -hmm. drive by or walk by, you see the Hanoks that you actually oh, yeah. worked on. So how do you feel when you see um, you know, actually, your little if, babies? If I count it together um, for the time I've been working, the number is actually not that big. Why? Mm. Because every project takes a long time to finish. I see. If we have a Hanok project, let it be a remodeling mm -hmm. or a new build Hanok, which in time and money um, doesn't make a big difference, by the mm. way. We take time for the design. Like uh, in Hanok, like the planning, we do it in depth because the space is always limited, so you have to consider the smallest things. Mm -hmm. So we start with an interview with our clients to get to know about their lifestyle, what they need, and so on and so on. And then the design is carried out, and then usually we have to pass committees for subsidies, and also usually um, we have to get uh, exemptions from building laws. Mm -hmm. For some you can get exemptions for Hanuk, but then you have to pass another committee, and it's a lot of work. It's a lot of uh, bureaucratic work we have to do. Mm -hmm. So um, right now, for example, we have a project. Um, it took us one year from starting the design to getting the building permission because oh, of wow. all the hurdles in between. Oh. And so you also have to take care of uh, archaeological sites now. So mm. you have investigations going on. That takes time. So it adds up. Mm -hmm. And then you have to build the Hanuk, right. which also takes a long time, uh -huh. like at least half a year, I would say, if not longer, if you mm -hmm. do it like properly. And we're talking about a Hanuk that's... Uh, a small a, Hanuk. A small Hanuk. Uh, like one family residential project. Uh -huh. And also we've been lucky that we've had really good relationships with our clients. Mm -hmm. So. It's always nice to, you know, go and revisit and say hello. Yeah. Fortunately. Absolutely. Yeah. Through his architecture firm Urban Detail, Daniel Chandler fuses Korean traditions with modern architecture. Then what's the reason behind his attachment to Hanok? Actually, we'll try to save um, a lot of the original structure and save for some of the original features because uh, it's an historic building and uh, you don't want to just get rid of it and build something new. Daniel Tandler said he wants to preserve the city's history and culture through architecture. We look forward to his future endeavors. For the future, uh, we're also uh, working on uh, new Hanok. Yeah, and uh, we'll have to find a way to um, embed this stunning architecture uh, into the future. 
Daniel dreams of writing a new chapter and creating a new future in Hanok architecture. Let us learn more about it. Now you have brought with you a notebook or a sketchbook. Or yes, <laughs> an old one that's falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks great. I love the way it looks. Um, since it is, you know, the Lunar New Year holiday mm -hmm. and we're dressed in the Hanbok and we're talking about Hanoks. Yeah. Um, we're going to take a look at, uh, now this is a book with all of your sketches. Yes, it's not all of my sketches, but okay, it's an old one. Yeah, uh -huh. and almost every summer. Mm -hmm. And I did internships at uh, yeah, construction sites, traditional sites, uh -huh. and so on. And then whenever I had time, I used to draw. Can we see? Sure. <laughs> so let me see what we have here. Yes, it is falling apart. Now, it's there we go. really we old, lost yes. a piece, but. So for example, this one. This is actually in Seoul. Oh, it's this is. in Pukchon, mm -hmm. uh, Peginje, which is uh, an old uh, residence, mm -hmm. uh, open to the public, by the way. I got this internship through the Hanuk Cultural Institute, Hanuk mm -hmm. Munawan, Ms. Myungi Chang. Mm -hmm. She helped me to get this internship at the site so I could try some carpentry. Like, you can't learn the whole profession, but right. you get an insight, and that's mm -hmm. where I made this sketch. Wow. Um, Okay, this so is the same one. place, mm -hmm. and uh, you can see the wooden structure here, um, and it's being reconstructed. There's some scribblings here where I noted the uh, position of, of the columns and everything. Oh, it's, it's not pretty, but it was for myself to understand it. I didn't think there was a meaning behind those, those dots, but oh, okay. It is, yeah. I, I needed this to understand the structure, and then mm. from there I could draw it. Very interesting. Yes. Okay, and, uh, and here we have another one with this some color. One. Yes, it's <laughs> some color. It looks nice, but I made a mistake there. But I okay, won't, so I should be holding. I won't it let this you know way. where. <laughs> I should be holding it this way. I think, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, this is one I took <laughs> a lot of time to draw, and I got angry at myself about doing one mistake. But I won't say which it is because if you don't know, you won't see. It. Okay. If you know Hanok, you might. <laughs> I might. I might take a very close look afterwards yes. after the show. Um, so but this like, uh, is a beautiful sketch as well. Uh, we'll take a look at one more. Okay. This is That's actually gorgeous. my personal um, favorite sketch. Mm. Um, it was at Umsong. See? But this is not the building uh, we were working on. This was just a very old, you know, simple village house. Not even a proper Hanuk. Um, I heard the crane crashed into the side and was a little bit uh, oh, I see. Yeah, damage. It's right here. Yeah, and as uh -huh. it was raining and the monsoon rain would pour down, it would just collapse mm -hmm. partly. But I found it so beautiful, like this old Hanok, mm. like the, the decay itself was so beautiful in some way. Uh -huh. So I just sat down and had to draw it. So it's not only always about, you know, splendid architecture. Sometimes simple things like this mm -hmm. can have an own beauty, so. You are an artist. You're a born artist, I must say, because, I mean, <laughs> we talked about how you majored in economics and you made that sudden change or yeah. that, you know, that shift mm -hmm. uh, to architecture. Did, <laughs> did you, I mean, was there any education? I mean, that art in any way, design that you did? Not in economics, but, you know, when I talked to my parents about my wish to change my field of studies, mm -hmm. my father said, or my parents both actually said, we didn't understand from the beginning why you pick economics. Ah. Go and study architecture. <laughs> That's what they said. Okay. And uh -huh. um, I'm very glad and grateful mm -hmm. that they reacted this way and uh, made it possible for me to, mm -hmm. to do this. A lot of foreigners, when visitors uh, mm -hmm. come to visit Korea, almost every visitor, I think, they want mm -hmm. to, you know, go see a Hanok yes. for themselves. And, and they're often very fascinated, just amazed. And they say how it has this natural beauty to it. Mm -hmm. It's very peaceful. But what do you think? Uh, so speaking from, a, from an architect perspective, what would you say is perhaps uh, a very important value? Well, Basically, every country has its own traditional architecture to, to begin with. Mm -hmm. And every traditional architecture is usually, usually um, uh, made for that country's climate and it's adjusted to the traditional way of living. Mm -hmm. So it all fits together. And that's the same with uh, 
Hanuk, Hanuk shows where we come from. Mm. It's a cultural asset, right? And then I can answer, well, to start with the climate, we have mm -hmm. very distinct four seasons in Korea, right? So we have very distinct, distinctively different spaces in Hanuk. For example, in the rooms, the pang, mm -hmm. which are very enclosed, you have the Hanji wallpaper, introverted, and your floor heating, the ondol. And the ondol comes from the northern regions where we had really, really cold winters to bear. Mm. And then you have the techong, which is the main hall. Uh -huh. You have a wooden floor, which is called maru. Mm. And uh, it's detached from the ground, so the air flows under it. And this comes from the southern regions where you had really hot summers. And the room is open. Ah, I see. Uh -huh. So you have spaces with a really, really uh, opposite character, like mm. these introverted closed rooms and this open, like the open main hall mm -hmm. and other open spaces. We have the courtyard. And uh, if you compare it with Germany, we have also common points, like mm -hmm. the wooden structure and walls made out of clay and so on. But we don't have that distinctively um, different spaces, uh, which serve like functions for different seasons. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's very particularly Korean, I would mm -hmm, say. Mm -hmm. yes. So you go to Germany whenever mm -hmm. you find the chance, uh, as often mm -hmm. as you could. And I heard this was back in 2006 that you actually earned uh, a certificate in building biology, am I correct? Uh, yes, building Th biology. 2016, building biology, I did, and yes. What exactly is um, building biology? That's actually a field uh, that just exists in Germany. Ah. Um, it has to do with uh, healthy building, mm -hmm. but it doesn't stop there. Like, um, how do we build that it's healthy for us humans, considering material, and many other aspects. Uh, but it's also about the whole living environment and what its relation to architecture. So we try to find a way to build architecture, to make architecture mm -hmm. that is good for us as humans, healthy for us, and also for the environment as a whole. Okay. So it's about sustainability. Mm -hmm. It's um, also social aspects. And yeah, I did that. <laughs> it's very interesting. Yeah. So do you fuse those skills, uh, the skills that you uh -huh. learned, um, into when you, when you construct Hanoks? Yeah. Uh, in, can you give us an example? Well, maybe? I try to. Mm -hmm. um, and fortunately, Hanok itself is actually an architecture that's much closer to nature than, mm. let's say, a concrete apartment building. Yes. Um, but on the other hand, um, it's not easy because, you know, Korea is a small market and there's just so much materials we can get. Mm. There's just so much uh, building techniques um, uh, we can refer to. Um, so right now, it would be difficult to totally apply it. But I think um, also in Korea, awareness is growing about such things. And I'm very hopeful for the future that more and more people will have an awareness and um, will, you know, try to build this way, try to build in a way that is good for us and for our environment. Yes. And I'm hopeful, yeah, we will get something with it mm -hmm. in the future. And finally, we are down to our final question, although I would love to continue our talk. Um, I'd like to ask a very simple but difficult question. Mm -hmm. What does a cheap house mean house. to you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, uh, first of all, Architecture in general always surrounds us. Mm. Always, it's always present, right? Like mm -hmm. you would have to go out in like remote nature to be in a place with, without architecture. And with, in architecture, your home, your house uh, is the place where you spend most of your time with. You're born there. You grow up, you learn from your parents, you cry, you laugh, you love, you fight, you reconcile. Everything you do at home, right? So it's, it's the most important space to mm -hmm. us in our life, our home. And in Korea, um, if you think about it, the relationship to your own house, your home, your parental um, land was so important. We have um, an important piece of literature, toji, right? Toji, yes. Which means maybe this part of your, your parental home, your land that belongs to your family mm -hmm. and the pain about losing it. Mm -hmm. And in a country where your home, your house was so important. Why has it become, in many aspects, like a consumer good? Mm. And I realize nowadays many, many people in Korea, many Koreans, they start longing again for their own home, for their real home. Yes. And those people, they come to us mm -hmm. and uh, we build their home with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your home is important, Very isn't important. it? Very important. Yeah, you're giving house to a whole new meaning 
Yeah, it's, your answer has uh, got me thinking a lot. And I think a lot of our viewers may be thinking, ah, oh, yeah, what so. does the house mean to me? Um, and I would like to thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's I been an honor. I hope that you continue on to build, construct, remodel, um, not only buildings, but even residential areas, houses that people, uh, residents can actually coexist with the beauty of nature and find love. Just enjoy every moment they spend in those that houses. That would be wonderful also for me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>